good morning everybody and welcome to um, this morning's uh, webinar which is all about managing changing priorities. Um, I'm Ruth Rowan, owner of Building Business Consultancy and we are the business support providers for the Enterprise East North Ants um, Business Support Programme. Um, I'd like to welcome this morning um, a business guest. Um, I'm really excited about this. Uh, we've got Gemma Suter, Director of Hensman's Hair Salon. Um, they've been trading for over 40 years and she's here this morning to really share her experience of managing change of priorities and things that they've implemented as an organisation um, over the last six six months um, in relation to changing priorities and, and things that have, have been going on and happening. So welcome Gemma. Um, thank you Hi. for joining us this morning. Thank me it's a uh, it's a pleasure to be here okay so we're just going to spend the next um 10 minutes i hope that's okay Gemma. really just talking about i know we had a brief conversation before and um it's just really talking about changing priorities um for business and i've got some some headings on here and i know when we discussed things um yesterday you mentioned some of these things so maybe yeah. You could go into a bit more detail about some of these areas um just in relation to what's changed what priorities have changed and how you've you've adapted and and developed as an organization yeah of course yeah i mean i think you know we're in an ever or we were in an ever-changing world um at you know quite a rapid speed already and i think you know covid uh coming along has accelerated some of these changes and is having to predict what the future holds for us as a business. Um, I think, you know, some of the things we've had to sort of accelerate is more sort of our computer software systems and how we interact with clients um, in a sort of technological sense. And I think, you know, as a hairdressing business, maybe we were a little bit slower to um, sort of uh, reach some of those things previously, um, even though we, we're always, you know, as a company, quite a forward thinking company that like to get ahead. Um, but actually, you know, we've had to really look and try and predict what the future holds. Um, one of the changes we've had to make is, you know, an online consultation system and being able to interact, you know, with our clients um, in a sort of online forum way because we can't interact in the same way with having to close for such you know extended periods of time uh, you know every second that we were in the salon had to count so we needed to whereas we might say you know come in have a chat um, and we'll consult with you of course we still offer that but actually we had to then have another way um, of people being able to communicate with us so that's been a you know a phenomenal change for us in the fact that you know, even for us stylists, they're far more aware to be able to um, know what's happening prior to the client coming in, which they love. Um, so that's been a real positive change for us um, because, you know, I think the unknown is always daunting and sort of that can give you a little bit anxiety. And especially with our younger, you know, um, stylists coming up, you know, that is something that is more of that we have to think a little bit more about you know and as well across the team because covid has put extra pressures on people um so i think you know this definitely helps them to have that sort of pre-communication pre-thought process of being able to really work with their client and um you know see what's coming ahead so that's been great um is that um what's the response been from customers for that has it yeah they've really really liked it you know and again you know we've had to look at spending patterns with clients things are totally different to what they were we've had to change rosters we've had to change late nights because actually we've got more people coming in in the day that are potentially working as well at the same time at times or fitting it into a busy schedule um so we've got you know um make sure we've got chargers and points where people can go and work if they need to um, at the same time um, because life is just different to, to what it was but yeah definitely been a really positive um, outcome and clients have just you know again been so thankful that we've put in new processes for them really. Yeah, absolutely. No, that sounds really good. And, and I think like you said, it's freed up your time in the salon to actually deliver the services that you're, that you're there to do yeah. and I suppose minimizing the impact of the numbers of people coming into the salon I suppose as well. Yeah, 
without a doubt and that that's you know had to completely change for us you know when we sort of um you know had to get our heads around the idea of it being a totally covid secure you know safe world minimal people coming you know having to adapt how we do skin tests and and again when people are coming into the salon they're just coming into for their service um we've really had to you know change a lot of our working practices um you know move our whole salon around you know to to allow for um social distancing and you know people have you know we've had so many positive comments thankfully come through saying thank you for you know we can see the the effort that's gone into making your salon very covid secure so yeah without a doubt yeah. definitely and you were you were quite sort of um, not lucky, but the way that your salon was already set up, it was it was easily movable, wasn't it? So you could. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, we made a decision of, you know, a few years ago that we actually because we are also a training academy, um, we wanted to have it as a multipurpose space. So, in fact, our dressing stations are on wheels and they can be moved so that um, we can move it to more of a lecture style environment as well. Um, and I think. From that point of view we were very very lucky to have that we could move everything and we we have moved everything in order to you know make our clients feel as comfortable as they possibly can coming into this environment in this you know difficult time yeah and and the way the business operates then you you were talking to me yesterday so around opening hours and pricing and things like that yeah, I mean, pricing wise, we've had to, you know, we've had to adapt that because of, you know, extra PPE costs and longer time, you know, and we felt it was important. We didn't actually, what we what we said to all of our clients was that actually we have um, a different scale of timing for our, our cuts, for example, so a 30 minute, 45 or 60 minute. And the standard, to be fair, is 45 minutes um, unless someone has very short hair, of which then we go down to the 30 minute. Um, but we sort of said to our clients, look, we need to you know for this first one back your hair's going to be longer your hair's going to be different your hair's going to be um you know take more time and you know that was very well received and we charged everyone out at the 60 minute haircut and um you know we've had to have a few increases of ppe charges and what have you um but you just have to you know adapt to what's going keep you in business and hopefully for another however many years you know we're celebrating 40 years this year so it's not quite been the celebration we wanted but you know we've we've made the most of it and luckily we had a little celebration in January um, which was the actual date so yeah you just you just have to work with the changing times and um, you know so far everyone's been really pleased and really thankful for everything we've done. Yeah and you and you mentioned about your opening times and you, you said that before around um, people's different ways of working as individuals so we've got a lot more people working from home now and um, you've you've you said to me that actually people are coming in the day more now and wanting yeah. to work from the salon different um, change of pattern we've got far more people coming in the day and and perhaps less people coming although we do still fill our Saturdays certainly less people coming the less demand for the late nights than there was mm -hmm. before yeah, it's really um, interesting, isn't it? It's, it's had to change with our staff and they've adapted, you know, they've been really, really great at adapting to, we might have to work this way for the next, you know, six to nine months and, and then we might have to change it again, but we've just got to work with the market and predict what's going to happen and fit with that um, in order to sort of, you know, stay ahead, really. Yeah, um, and with your staffing and your management of staff, you've obviously had major changes in in the way that um staff are working um in relation just you know who would have thought a year ago that a hairdresser would have to wear a mask and a visor all day to work you know and it's it's quite a hot environment sometimes isn't it in the sense of of dryers and things like that yeah i think you know it is a very hot environment and i think you know at first we got used to the visor and we were quite sort of well at least it's not you know double ppe and and then we obviously did have to then you know but safety is more important than anything and i think you know where we've had to adapt with that is allowing our um stylists and our team to have you know whereas we would have had an hour's lunch now they have 
you know, chosen to sort of break it down into some smaller gaps. So some of them choose to have two half an hours because it's just a bit easier. Some have, you know, some more staggered 15 minute breaks um, because they, they prefer that in order to have that break from the PPE where they go into um, the area that we have for the team on their own because, you know, we can't share uh, the staff room facilities, but we work that around, you know, a break schedule. And, and that seems to work for, you know, or actually we have adapted. We would have never had this before, but because the students have got their own pod or their own bubble as such, um, they would actually be able to sort of have um, their lunch or, you know, if they have a break, they can have it in their area, which, you know, but prior to this, we would have never sort of allowed people to have breaks and salon floors. But, you know, we have to do what's right. And it's and it's all about the health and mental well-being of our team and them being able to work in that, you know, environment and, and still enjoy their job because we don't want them coming to work, not enjoying it because things have got, you know, a lot tougher than they used to be. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and I think your, your industry is one of the, you know, one of the worst hit uh, along with retail and hospitality. Um, I, I think it's you, you know you've you're in a second full lockdown so mm. you can't actually trade so in the sense of communication internally and externally is is that really had to you've had to really increase that but I suppose communicating in different ways as well yeah I mean I think you know whereas what we're finding you know which is great for us as a salon you know of course People, you know, some people are very willing to give all their details and their emails and, and what have you and follow you through social media channels. Whereas there are, you know, a sector of people that don't want to be flooded with that sort of communication. But obviously, since lockdown, that has greatly changed for us. And people are like, yes, please take my email, take my details, because they want to be kept in the loop of what's going on. So that's been a real positive for us. Um, and I think... Yeah, I, I think we've had to, you know, we have actually changed, you know, since lockdown, our whole, um, you know, software system, because that was something that we found a company that had were really progressive in their sort of thought pattern and had working with alongside clients, which, you know, thankfully, with the second lockdown, it's been so much easier um with them they had an email straight away ready to go to that we could just drop and you know put our details in you know telling our clients what's going on our digital magazine company were amazing and they you know because obviously you know we weren't able to offer magazines at all or you know even drinks at first so the the magazine company became digital and they've let us offer that to all of our clients free of charge during lockdown so I think you know you know I think it really pays off to talk to the companies that you're dealing with you know some of them were amazing during the first lockdown and we've said you know this lockdown well look let's just see how we go if it's only a month then you know things should be fine but um we, we just have got to go with it really um and you know it's it's sad we've got friends in Ireland that have just heard that they're not going to be able to open for very long again now and hard as an industry to see them be hit again you know they've been closed for five weeks now mm -hmm. um, I think we just but you know we've just got to all pull together and unite and just say you know we've all got a common goal to beat this and we'll have to do what's necessary yeah absolutely and I think like you said it's key that internal and external communication and and like you said um having your team meetings you're, you're still doing things like that aren't you even during lockdown? yeah yeah so we keep and we have in fact even when we were back kept the team meetings via zoom you know because our team were really passionate about you know every minute we're there we need to be doing clients so you know we might stop for a half an hour break normally so again we've adjusted that and you know we have that you know maybe more towards the end of the day or um earlier on or they will sometimes do that on the day off and all you know group together just to keep that those lines of communication going um so that if we are meeting because again that still has to be in full ppe so we want you know to make sure that it's as comfortable as possible and we're still listening to our team and and they help us to move on yeah so zoom's been phenomenal we've all had to learn how to get used to different forums and uh yeah it's been great for the team and i think that's something we will continue with yeah Oh no, that's really good. And I think and have you been talking um and having meetings with your suppliers the same way as well? Yeah. 
having meetings. Some suppliers have, you know, come in and we've had to meet with them more in person. But yeah, a lot of um, online meetings with suppliers. Um, and, you know, again, you've just got to keep those open lines of communication um, yeah. between us all. And, you know, that's that's that works. I mean, it's not going to completely replace. I mean, we have in a few days our British Hairdressing Awards in, in a week or so. And that's all going to be online and that won't be the same. But, you know, there are some things that, you know, are great for being online. And, you know, even to be honest, being able to have more of a, uh, you know, meetings with even our younger apprentices, because we used to do a lot of coaching. Um, that's something that had to stop. So, you know, we'll keep keep all of that going as best as we possibly can. Because, you know, they're, they're the people that will suffer, the, the younger people of the generation that are looking to progress and move on. And we need to keep that going, ready for school leavers, for example, next year. So, um, yeah, no, uh, we've, we've done a lot of online communication. Yeah, no, that's really good. And and um, I just want to um, just, just finish really there. I know you've done a lot of stuff around... Um, again social media strategies and things like that to support staff as well um and and getting them and encouraging them i suppose it's the right content isn't it and, and sharing. yeah i think you know we took a brave step to actually um all of our staff now have their own instagram page because a lot of what you know it's hard as a hairdresser because you kind of do work in your own little bubble um even though you're amongst and part of a team and i think you know we sort of is that the right decision you know even with our new software company they now have their own app and a bit more control over their <clears throat> you know access to their columns and what have you um, rather than it just being say on our reception and that was a you know do we don't we it's got negatives and positives attached to it um, but we have to move on and we have to you know accept that <clears throat> clients will come to us as a brand and you know we have contracts in place to protect this and social media policies and and all of that and 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 so far it's you know it works really well yeah and and just the other thing I wanted to talk to you about as well with regards to we've been supporting businesses um to to look at alternative ways to sell so online and digital solutions and um, when they can't actually actually do things and, and you've been working really hard on that haven't you that's something that we're currently just about to launch, um, hopefully the tail end of next week. So, you know, not necessarily going to benefit us at this lockdown if it finishes when it is due to. Yeah. Um, but, you know, definitely long term, you know, yeah. things are changing. And I think for us to be able to, you know, we're sort of working on sort of more of a, a concept where, you know, a recommendation concept. So, you know, if you were to say to me, I need something, you know, I'm not coming in till next time, but I need something to do this for my, for my hair, then we can recommend that out to you. And there's an online shop and we can filter through that. So, you know, hopefully, I think you have just got to look at, you know, this is going to be with us still for a little while to come. So you have have got to look at different ways of you know bringing revenue into the company when you can't be open yeah and I also think even you know it's like you said it's not going anywhere anytime soon and it's it's always going to be in the back of people's minds whether it's this or something else but but again I think what we've seen is we've seen changes in in buying behavior and buying patterns so yeah I think customers are, are, are wanting are wanting access access to that and it is very much around, I can't just drop in and pick my shampoo if I run out um, yeah. into the salon because it, that's not appropriate. So there needs to be on turned way of doing that. And, and I know that when, when we um, had a conversation, you discussed it. And again, which I thought was really interesting, um, the products that you were looking at, at selling online and, and actually you had to, had to ensure that yeah. they were... Yeah, we've had to, you know, because online buying is a problem to us when retailing as hairdressers. Yeah. And so, you know, we we have this constant competition between, you know, well, actually, we can't do it, you know, at the price that some of the, you know, online um, companies do, because we can't buy in the numbers that they need to buy in to be able to offer it at that. And so we have actually carefully selected now some, some brands that are, you know, hairdresser kind of led and only sold in hairdressers. And, and um, they are not an online company that, you know, they won't be able to, they're a professional brand that won't be able to just be bought you know more mainstream yeah. 
they actually work in coincide with an amazing um, tool that we've now got an analyzer, which will analyze and scan your hair health. Um, and then you get the recommendations through that as to what will work best on your hair. And sometimes results can be really surprising. It's not what you think your hair needs. And I think that's sometimes the negative of online is, how do I know that this is definitely what I need? So it's okay kind of repeat buying, but sometimes new buying, you do need that bit of guidance. You know, what's of someone that is a more, you know, professional in knowing what your hair needs. Yeah, no, absolutely. Brilliant. I, I think it, it sounds like you guys work so hard um, and I'm sure they're still changing priorities all the time. Yeah. Every single time. time, you know, like most of us, your heart's in your mouth every single time Boris comes on TV. Yeah. Quite sure what it's going to say. All the impact, you know, of, of what that's going to happen. And then again, the priorities are going to change. And, you know, we've also got Europe, you know, exit um, coming up and that's that's going to hit any business um, because at some point the supply chain there. So again, the, the change in priorities are going to happen. I'm not Sorry, just take a breath and go, yeah, okay, right. What's going to be our new direction? And, yeah. and and, and I think, like you said, you've got all of those systems and processes and the communication lines are really clear. So you can quite quickly adapt and change. And I think, you know, what we've seen is businesses really thrive and develop because they are changing their priorities and they're doing it quickly rather than saying, I can't do it the way I always do it. So I'm just going to sit tight until I can do it that way again. It's, yeah. That's, you, you can't that, write like that. Yeah, you can't. No, no, definitely yeah. not. Yeah, okay, no, thank you so much. That's been really, really interesting. Um, I just want to um, just leave you guys um, just a couple more slides, really, with regards to change success. So it's, it's around changing priorities and, and successfully, really. And there's a people side of change. And um, there's lots of stuff around this online that you'll be able to find. But it's about that awareness, isn't it? So it's awareness that the changing priorities need to happen. It's a desire that we want to make those changes and we are going to prioritise them and the knowledge, the ability and then the reinforcement. And I think, you know, Gemma's talked about this. It's the constant communication and, and the reinforcement that actually those changes that are being made, they are a priority, but they are a priority for a positive and a, to a benefit for the business. Um, and again, um, as a business, there's key phases of change. So it's really what the business needs. It's coming up with the concept and design. So, you know, as Gemma mentioned before, they've worked really hard on so many different areas of their business from technology to new routes to market, to communication with um, staff and also communication and customer service with their customers. And they've already seen different um, buying patterns and behaviors that they're having to adapt their business um, to meet. So it's really that concept and design. And then the implementation, I think, is really key um, but the most important thing really is the post implementation so it's ensuring that we are making these changes um, to react um, to things that are happening but we're also reviewing um, because again like we've said you take a deep breath and you take every day step by step because we are in a world where it is changing really quickly and it's about that post implementation is it working is it not we need to reevaluate it um, and, and look at how we can implement those changes differently. So I think that's just some key information there. Um, and just finally, I want you to just leave you with this. And, and when Gemma and I had a discussion yesterday, it was really successfully managing change in priorities. And, and we really said, you know, you mentioned Gemma, didn't you? It's about predicting, isn't it? Predicting what the future will be, yeah. Yeah, and, and we can do that, you, you know, with the knowledge and the information that's out there. And, and like you said, Gemma, you know, you're working with your partners in other countries. So with Ireland that um, um, are maybe going through a different process and different system, but actually can share their knowledge and their experience, um, which is really helpful. So I think that's really key um, for businesses. It's not necessarily it's not about being alone, is it? It's about working with with other organisations in your yeah. industry. Um, to, you can't always predict, but you can't you to what other people say, and and then you know start to gain ideas and and um, from your peers. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, and then the second thing is plan. So it's making sure that you've got a clear plan, you, and and then really proceeding. It's it's making those changes and and seeing through um, 
those changes that you need to make. And it's really all of those three things really help you deal with changing priorities. So I think I just wanted to leave that with you, the three P's of predict, plan and proceed. And um, that's really key when we are looking at um, changes and changing priorities. So thank you for listening this morning. Um, I know obviously um, you guys are now watching this after we've delivered. So if you've got any questions, please do message us. And um, we'd really like to hear from you. There's so many other services available um, throughout East North Dance through the Enterprising East North Dance Recovery Programme. Um, please do come and speak to us. We want to hear about your business, how it's doing, how we can help you. So our details are there. And I know there's more details to follow at the end of um, the webinar. But thank you very much. And um, I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thank you.